Hey, what's up guys? A couple weeks ago, I released a video showing you the initial installation of my NAS for my home network. I use the Synology 1621 XS Plus. That is a very good NAS that I've been using for my video editing and file sharing in my home network, even outside of my home network. So in that video, I showed you how I installed the disks. I went all the way to creating the pools and the volumes. So today we're going to continue with that installation. I'm going to show you some changes that I did to the NAS, including the upgrade of the memory. I went from eight gigabyte that came with an to 32 gigabyte. I also enabled SSD cache so that I can have higher read and write speeds. And most importantly, we're going to talk about user management. I'm going to show you how you can create users and groups. I'm also going to create a shell folder that will be available anywhere inside or outside of my home network. So my iPhone, my Android, my iPad, my MacBook or my Windows computer will be accessing the same files from the NAS. And also my phones are synced to the NAS. So if I take a quick video right now with my iPhone, right away the video will be uploaded to the NAS and I can use it later for video editing or anything that I need it for. So if you like this kind of videos, don't forget to like the video on YouTube, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of my future videos and also follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. So I've been using the NAS for almost three months now and I can't tell you how happy I am with it. I'm using a lot of services on here and of course I'm going to create a lot more videos showing you the different services and features that I like about this NAS. So if you look at this one here under storage manager, you can see that I have five disks now. This fifth one is an SSD that I added just for the virtual machines and then we have the two NVMe that are currently used for SSD cache. So if we go under storage, you can see that now I have two storage pools. The first one is the one I created in the initial video. This one has 32 terabyte of capacity and the second one was added later. This one has one terabyte for VMs only. And you can also see that the SSD cache is activated on the storage pool number one. So if you want to enable SSD cache, you only need to have those NVMe's already installed and you need to go under create and select create SSD cache. So you can create SSD cache for read or write. And this is very good because I have hard drives. So if you want to increase the speed for some applications that do a lot of reading and writing like databases or things like that, it's going to be very helpful. I also increased the memory on the NAS. If we go under resource monitor, you can see that under memory, I now have 32 gigabyte instead of the eight gigabyte that I had before. So all I had to do was get some new memories. I had two 16 gigabyte and I shut down the device. I opened it and replaced the old memories. And I have the links to the memories in the description if you are interested. So I have 32 gigabyte. That's why I have a lot of VMs on this NAS. So what I'm going to use today for my demonstration is a VM running on this NAS. So this is a new NAS that is brand new and I'm going to show you how I'm going to create the users and the shared folders inside this NAS here. So before getting into setting up your NAS, setting up the users and the shared folders, you need to plan first. You need to know exactly what you need in your organization and you can have different kind of setup. You might be in a business environment where you need a lot of users, a lot of groups for every department or every different entity that you have inside your organization. And of course, the main group is that administrators where you have all the admins that are able to access everything in Stadio NAS and that's something you need to consider when it comes to security. You need to make sure that you have as less admins as possible because those admins have a lot of power on your data. Me in my case it's the home environment so I'm going to have only two groups the admins where I am the only admin and also the regular users where I'm going to create many accounts including mine because you need to know that for security reasons you cannot use an admin account to connect from your devices because that's a security risk if your computer get hacked the hacker will have an admin access to your nas and you don't want that so you need to use a user account for every smb or afp connections to your nas i had a client reaching out because his nas was completely encrypted someone was able to access the nas and encrypt all the files on the nas they were asking for bitcoin before decrypting the files and you don't want that so that's why it's better to plan ahead and know exactly who who has access to what. Even when it comes to shared folders, you can have many folders depending on many departments. In my case, I only have a few shared folders and the main one is here. I have a folder for backups and multimedia where I have my movies and everything media in my home network. In the new NAS, we can go under the main menu and select control panel. Here we can go under user and group. And here we can see that we have KB admin, which was the admin account that was created during the installation. And we also have the regular admin account and a guest account. The guest account and the admin account need to be disabled for security reasons. You don't want to keep them enabled. And under group, we have three groups. We have the administrators that have access to everything on the NAS. We have the HTTP users that have access only to web services and we have the regular users. We can add more groups from here. So right now I'm going to create a new user. I'm going to go on the user 
create and I'm going to give it the name of KB Trainings. Here I can put a description if I want to and an email address and I'll give it a password. Then I'll go next. And here I need to say what group my user belongs to. Right now, he's just a regular user. I can add him as an administrator by checking here, but I don't want that. I just want to create a regular user account. I'll go next. Here I can assign permissions depending on the different shared folders that we have. And because we don't have any shared folder, this is empty for now. I'll go next. And here we can define the different quotas for the users and we don't have anything to define here. I'll just go next. And these are the different permissions for the user when it comes to different applications on the NAS. And now I'm just going to leave it under group permissions because I don't want to manage permissions per user, but I can do it per group, it's much easier. So I'll go next. So these are the speed limitation for the users. I'm going to leave everything unlimited and we go next. And this is the summary of all the settings for this user, KB Trainings. I'm going to hit done and I just created a new user. One quick thing I wanna show you under advanced configuration, you can enable this option here if you want to create a home folder for every new user. So you have a folder named homes and under that folder, every new user you create will have his own folder inside that's something you can enable if you want to but me personally i don't like that i want to create my home shared folders and folders and subfolders so i can manage the permissions on those so what i'm going to do now is create a shared folder i'm going to go under shared folder and hit create i'm going to name it main I can give you the description and because I have three volumes, I'm going to pick this first one for the main folder and hit next. Here I can encrypt the shared folder. If I want to encrypt the data for security reasons, I can put a key here to keep it encrypted, but I don't want it for now. I'll just go next. And here you can enable the data checksum if you want to ensure your data integrity all the time on your NAS. It kind of slows down the speed a little bit, but you can do it if you want to. I'm going to leave it as is and we'll go next. And this is the summary of what we are about to create. I'm going to hit next again. And now it's showing me the different users inside the NAS and you can see the folder is created here. So now I need to manage permissions on this folder. So here I can pick what user has access to the folder or I can also manage everything by groups. Just like I said, I'm going to select the groups and this is because if I create a new user, I'm just going to add the user to the group and the user will inherit all the permissions for that group. The administrators already have read and write access. I'm going to add the user as read and write for this folder and we'll hit apply. So that's it. I have my folder created here. I can see it from here or I can go under the main menu and select file station. And this is the folder that we just created. I can come over here and create a new folder inside and name it test, for example. And it's created. I can go inside it and create test test. We have a folder inside this other folder. So we just created KB Trainings, a user, and we created main, a shared folder. What we want to do now is make sure that this folder is accessible anywhere in our network. So what I need to do is go under file services. These are the different services or applications that you can use to share the data from the NAS. SMB is the main one that we're going to use. And as you can see here, it's showing that if you are using a PC or a Windows computer, you can use Synology 2 to have access to the NAS. Or if you use Mac, you can go under Finder and use SMB Synology 2. So SMB is enabled. We also have AFP for Mac. I do have a Mac, so I'm just going to enable it. NFS, FTP, RSync, and all these other ones, I'm not going to enable any of these. And there's nothing to touch under the advanced configuration. So now let me show you how to connect to a shared folder from our devices. I need to go under this PC and scroll the options here and select map network drive. So here I can point to the server by doing Synology 2. And I need to go in a specific shared folder that is the main folder. So I'm going to connect using different credentials, not the one that I have on this computer. So when I go finish, it's going to ask me for credentials. So I'm going to use KB Trainings. And this is where you need to use a user account. Never use an admin account in a case like this because your admin account will have full access to the NAS. So you don't want that if your computer get hacked, for example. So I'm going to insert all the credentials and hit OK. As you can see, now I have access to the main shared folder and I can see this test folder here and inside we have the test test and I can go and grab any file from my download here. Let me copy the Logitech file. I can just bring it here and put it in this folder. So the file is already on the NAS. I can go back to the NAS under file station 
and go inside test test you can see that the logitech file is in the nas so now we are on the mac and because we have afp enabled we can see synology 2 showing up here so all we have to do is click on it and click connect as and just put the same credentials with kb trainings username and password and directly we will have access to the same folder that is shared so on the phone i use an application called synology drive what we have to do is go under package center and make sure you download the synology drive server so i'm going to look for drive and this is it i can install it from here and it's going to be installed on my nas first so i'm going to select the volume i want to share it's going to be volume one and that's it for synology drive server so on my cell phone i need to download synology drive so once you have it downloaded for the first time you have to log in to your nas by putting the ip address or the domain name of your nas and the credential of one of the users and again you need to use a regular user to connect after that you will have access to your files from the nas directly on your phone for the backup and sync task we're going to talk about it next time when i'll be talking about all the backup options and sync options as well and that's the same thing you can do on an iphone ipad or any other mobile device that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you have any question you can leave it in a comment and if you like the video don't forget to like on youtube and subscribe to the channel and if you want to start your career in this field if you want to be in a tech industry you can take my course on the ccna 200 301 it goes from zero to an engineer i'm going to give you all the skills that you need to become an network engineer security engineer or cloud engineer or whatever and all of that is happening on kbtrends.com check it out thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care and bye